Hey everybody, welcome to episode six of the Real Take Podcast. We have a very special guest with us today, and I know I'm guilty of saying this pretty well every week, however it is especially true today. In the building today is Ken Murphy, and I know a lot of you are familiar with Ken in the Cape Girardeau area, but I'll tell you a little bit about his backstory. Ken ran a comic book shop in Cape Girardeau called Marvels and Legends for 12 years, and on his 10th anniversary of running the store, he decided to start the first Comic Con of Cape Girardeau. And even after he no longer ran the store, of course he continued this awesome tradition, which still continues to this day, and actually next year will mark the 14th anniversary. Um, so mark your calendars April 26th through the 28th of 2019, here in Cape Girardeau will be the 14th annual Cape Comic Con. So that's always a fun event. Everyone has a blast. Huge crowds, great costumes. I mean, it's really a good time. So make sure and show up for that. Now, I've personally known Ken for a number of years and can tell you that, first of all, he's one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. And secondly, he equally has a love and appreciation for movies. So it was honestly just great fun to be able to talk with him about so many different movies, genres, uh, backstories, personally what we took away from them. So I do hope you guys enjoy our perspective on the different films that we covered. And with that said, I'll go ahead and tell you what we did cover for our flashback year. That was 1993. So we talk a little bit about what was going on then handful of movies and then we pick our favorites from that and then for our franchise battle it was a little bit unique we covered more movies than we usually do we actually covered 19 movies and that is only because we were covering the marvel cinematic universe and everybody knows in the mcu there's a lot of different stuff going on lots of different stories that correlate to each other so we covered those in phases phase one two and three Ken and I both picked out our favorites from those, and who doesn't love talking about Marvel? So that was a good time. And then for our Who They Play Best, we talked about the legend Tom Cruise. And Ken is a huge fan of Tom Cruise, as am I. So we both had a blast talking about some of his best roles, and then we do pick a winner, which I can tell you was not easy to do. But with that said, please now enjoy episode six with the one, the only, Ken Murphy. <laughs> First of all, Ken, thank you for being here. Yeah, my How are you? I'm good. Man. <laughs> cool. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So uh, today we are starting out with our flashback year is 1993. So 93, how old were you at 93? <laughs> Don't be, throw you under the bus there. You, you I was 29. Li- you can lie. I was 29. 19, huh? I was 20. Yeah. Cool. I was, uh, I was a couple years old. And uh, so, so we're just going to kind of cover a couple things that were going on then. So basketball, NBA championship was the Bulls, Michael Jordan era. Did yep. you watch I did. some of those? Yeah. I did. Um, Bulls fan? No. No? Okay. No. Who's your basketball uh, team? You so, one? yeah, I, I did. Um, so I was a, a Bird Magic fan. Okay. And I know that sounds crazy because why would you be both, right? So I was a Bird fan um, from 1978 to 19, to the Dream Team. When they won yeah. the gold medal, that was kind of the cap, I think, for me. Sure. Um, now that that run had, well, when that run ended, uh, I, I started just realizing how much I appreciated uh, Magic Johnson and the Lakers sure. during that run. So they got to do it together. Everyone has to have their rival, their opponent. Yeah. It doesn't work if you're just, you know. If you're on your own. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I, so I love that era of basketball, 1978-79, yeah. through uh, the Dream Team. Uh, Ma- Michael Jordan came along, of course, and and became the greatest basketball player in the world and won six championships, two three-peats. Insane. With, with a little break in the middle. Yeah, a little baseball fun in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I, I, I just, I'm not a fan of Chicago. Yeah. Hardly. Any. Where were you living in 93? Were you here? Uh, that's a great question. I, I was in St. Louis just getting ready to transition back to Cape. Oh, cool. Um, but I'm not a fan of Chicago on hardly any level. Really? Any level I can think of. So dislike or just indifferent? <laughs> You're leaning toward dislike. On a, <laughs> on a very, on a very uh, uh, I, always, I always preface this kind of thing. Um, on a level of fully understanding what's important in life, and I'm sure there's wonderful yeah. people that live there. Sure. But I think no, you're I not have, a hater. Oh. That's, that's fair. You're not a hater. Yeah. But as far as you're not a fan of it. Not a fan. That's, that's fair. I even... I even struggle with Michael Jordan being the greatest basketball player that ever lived. Oh, my God. And I know most people that are under 40 flip out. Yeah. Man, that's a tough—I mean, I think it's right. literally impossible right. to— sure. It's a, It's kind of a frustrating 
conversation really even is. because I mean it can just go on and on. There's yeah. no there, since they never played against each other, it's it's nearly impossible. But but moving on to baseball, I know you're a baseball <laughs> guy. So the Blue yeah. Jays won that year. <laughs> yeah. Have you? So you're a Yankees guy, right? I'm a Yankees guy. Always. So, what yeah. got you into the Yankees? Is this just what you oh. grew up? Your family is that? No, it's great. I love telling these stories. Um, two reasons. My dad brought me up to be a huge baseball fan. Cool. And my dad basically thought two teams existed, and that was the Cardinals and the Yankees. Okay. And and they they are the two most uh, adorned franchises in the history of Major League Baseball with twenty seven World Series and. Thirteen. Anyway, uh, pretty close. And if I got those wrong, I'm apologizing. You know, I d- I do. But since you mentioned that, it's eleven um, or thirteen. I do a little fact check know. thing at the know. end of the show. Yeah. Great. So I just kind of check if I forget <laughs> anything. Like I go back and go, oh hey, I forgot who directed that. So I'll just kind of mention it. So I'll look up how so, many we won. So the cool thing about that is, growing up in the seventies, um, my favorite baseball team was the Cincinnati Reds uh, with Johnny Bench up until nineteen seventy seven. In 1977, Reggie Jackson left Oakland and went to New York, and and that was just, <laughs> you know, that's just like that's that's larger than life going to the largest city in the world with all the, yeah, and 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 Reg, and then went to and then uh, you know went to World Series, so the four home runs, you know, four consecutive pitches. I mean, we could go on and on. Right. So I'm all about the records he said. Yeah. Yeah. So and I'm about uh, I'm 13 at this time in 1977. And yeah, that was the coolest thing that ever happened. So from Thanks. that day, so you got that, you got Reggie Jackson, and you got Star Wars in the same year. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so so then then, then I, I so I, I enjoyed the Reggie era, and I'm a kid. I'm just a kid. I'm baseball. That's all I did. I played baseball. So uh, got to be an adult, living an adult life, having a job, and all this kind of good stuff. And then the uh, then the uh, Derek Jeter era hit. And I became a Yankee fan all over again. And nice. here's how I'll end my baseball uh, night conversation. Um, and yeah, to get back to the Toronto Blue Jays, uh, wow. Couldn't care less. Huh? Woo. Yeah. Couldn't care less. <laughs> um, so uh, the Cardinals and the Yankees played in the last World Series in 1964, the year I was born. Uh-huh. They've not played in the World Series since the year I was born. Uh, they, and I'm not great with years, but I'll just tell you it was the year that the Yankees were up 3 0 over the Red Sox mm-hmm. and the Cardinals were waiting and the Yankees lost. Oh, four. And the Yankees lost four I'm straight. Pretty confident, 0-4, because we Good. lost to Boston. I say we is in St. Louis because uh, I'm a Cardinal sure. fan. Uh, but I'm, I, I love the Cardinals. I'm gonna say 0-4, and then I'll check it later. So, so. in 0-4, I sat there and thought, "This is it." Now, here's a <laughs> funny thing. Uh, ah, there's another story. So that that killed me. 0-4 killed me because sure. the Yankees were swept four in a row, or, or they lost four in a row, right? Yeah. Winning three, and it was a collapse. And it was miserable, and yes. I hated every minute of it <laughs> because. Uh, they were going to play the Cardinals. It was going to be great. Yeah. Second thing Dang. is, my son Brady was born. Uh, the, the Yankees won the World Series. <sighs> okay. And my Brady was born in 01, right? Okay. So the Yankees must have won the World Series in, in 2000. Mm. And then they had not won the World Series since Brady was born. So I told okay. Brady he was the, the problem. He was the jinx. <laughs> yes. and, and the birth of my son Brady was causing the Yankees not to win the World Series. And oh, we, did, we were having a blast. As, right? as uh, Bill and, Cosby say, I brought you into this world and I can take you out of it. You might need to make a one, sacrifice for the and, Yankees. And, and make right? another one that looks just like you. We get that <laughs> yes. So, uh, oh, I miss the good old days of Bill Bill. Yeah. Um, so, I, so I got Brady I got Brady in a Yankees jersey. <laughs> and he's, he's, he's one year old. And they're playing the uh, Diamondbacks, and they lose on that stupid little flare to center field. Diamondbacks in, in 01? 01. It was, Randy Johnson wasn't there that. I think he. Was he on there yeah, yet? I think he was. Oh, he but anyway, was. long story. Uh, so then um, the Yankees did win a World Series about uh, X amount of years later, the A-Rod year that he yes. had a good World Series. I don't remember. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, Brady's off the hook. <laughs> And we, Thank can, goodness. and we can move on from baseball to the Yankees. Football, Cowboys. Know. Yeah, big fan. Troy Aikman and the... Yeah, 93. The, the triplets. Uh, I guess that was the first time they used that term, I think. Yeah. I think Emmett and... Uh, when did they become... Do you remember... If you don't know, it's okay. Do you remember when they became uh, America's team? Oh, God. When it was like branded? Self-branded. Don't yeah, you know, like self-branded. Michael Jackson, King of Pop. <laughs> Everyone... Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Okay. Please call me this. Sure. I'd like to be called this. <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah. I don't remember what year. Yeah, it, it doesn't was, matter. So I'll tell so you America's what. Team it started with uh, TBS and the Braves. They uh, they coined so. America's station or America's whatever, uh, and the Cowboys jumped on that hard. Yeah. The football. Okay. Well, it's stuck. I mean, r- regardless if people like him or not, the name is stuck around. People know him. Is that um, Bill Clinton was the president in 93. 
Is there a question there? No, right, I don't think so. There's too much scandalous <laughs> stuff we can talk about, so we'll just skip right past it's it. Moving right along. Best-selling album. I would like to ask you, are you a Whitney Houston fan? Because the best-selling album in that year was the soundtrack from the Bodyguard movie. I don't even, I'm not even familiar, honestly. You're kidding. I'm a big sorry. movie fan like yourself, Kevin uh, Costner? I know who, I mean, I'm familiar of what it so is. A, Never seen it. So I'm a huge Kevin Costner fan. Yeah? Um, is this movie good? Should I see this? <laughs> we'll get there. Okay. Uh, Huge Kevin Costner fan, and I just again one more time, <laughs> monster. Kevin I, I don't remember you, <laughs> Kevin Costner. Big time. I Whitney be, Houston. Too. Uh, going back to No Way Out. Anyway, anyway, Kevin Costner. Um, no, not so much a Whitney Houston fan. Although she did a wonderful job with Dolly Parton's "I Will Always Love You," mm. so she's gonna get a thumbs up for that for sure. Sure. And and her 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 ability to sing, yeah, pretty pretty incredible. I mean, not a fan per se I'm not she a was, fan of her songs but she's very talented yeah exactly yeah, she was sure. pretty darn good in this the movie was not great <laughs> yeah but uh, it, but it if had, you like Kevin Costner had a little watch. something had a little something with the two of them and he spoke at her funeral and if you ever want if you ever want to see that YouTube Kevin Costner speaking at Whitney Houston's, Houston's funeral it's pretty darn that's cool it's it's very it's good I don't know what that means exactly but it's good yeah. to hear it what he said yeah. What he said was good. There sure. you go. There you go. Um, great. Just great. a couple of average costs, just kind of showing the time frame in 93. So a gallon of gas was $1.11. That'd be nice. Uh, movie tickets were four fourteen, a little higher nowadays. So story on that. I moved to Los Angeles in 1987, uh -huh. and I was paying 9 bucks in 1987. In 9 bucks for a movie ticket? Correct. Whew. Yeah, not gas. Jeez. That's, I did not realize that. Oh, I mean, everything's higher in Los Angeles, but, but, but still, but that's but more double. than double. Yeah. It, it, crazy. So I, I don't know if that's still true today. That would be over $20, think, but I, I, I think, maybe I, not quite. I think it's probably 16 17 bucks, yeah. if I had to guess. Still a lot higher, yeah. But but what the Jeez. heck? Maybe I was going to them them cool Hollywood, Hollywood <laughs> well, I know you weren't seeing 3D, because this uh, was the 90s. <laughs> I, was in a, I don't see 3D now. No. Uh, I went to Man's Chinese and all that kind of stuff. Oh, fancy on, stuff. On the regular. <laughs> Some popular movies from 93 were uh, Free Willy, Schindler's List, Sleepless in Seattle, Mrs. Doubtfire, blah, 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 Mrs. Doubtfire, uh, Robin Williams fan, yeah? Mm -mm. No? Dang. Not so much. I like him. Uh, What's Eating Gilbert Grape, The Firm, Cruises movie there, uh, Cool Runnings, and The Pelican Brief. Uh, so it, it's funny, I was going through 1993's movies and... We didn't come up with any. <laughs> Other the same? Yeah, that's well, funny. We I always make a fairly short list, yeah. and I'm curious to see what the guest is always into. Yeah. So you're not into any any of these, but you have your own list. Is okay. that right? So I'm not down with uh, this free willy animal. <laughs> no, uh, save the whale. Done. When uh, I was four, Schindler's I liked list, it. Not a feel-good kind of movie. I'm no, 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 no. Sleepless in Seattle, kind of cute. Yeah. Mrs. Doubtfire, ugh, couldn't tell <laughs> <laughs> What's eating Gilbert Grape? So I tell Brady, my son, he's 16. DiCaprio is one of his earlier movies, yeah. I believe. Right? Yeah, I tell my son Brady all the time, Brady, tell me again what's my tagline sometimes. What do I tell you? You don't do weird. I don't do weird. Don't do weird. I don't do weird. <laughs> um, I don't do odd. Huh. I'm odd enough. Mainstream. Yeah, my, the main, nothing my, wrong with that. My, my brother and I, yeah, my brother and I grew up together. He's a year older than I am. We grew up and and I was just the top forty mainstream everything, and he was yeah. just the alt guy. Oh god! You know, he was like, yeah, it was really funny. Stuff nobody's heard of. Yeah, yeah exactly. And it, and then when everybody heard of it, he would run off. Yeah. That let me tell you something. That, yeah. I don't understand. I I wish this was a call in show because maybe someone could call me and tell me. I'm 53 years old, and to this day, I've never understood that mentality. Cannot grasp spit for anything. Read the books. Uh, read all of the John Grisham books. John Grisham, he had a big year. The Pelican Brief. Yeah. Those two, good grief. You get um, Denzel, yeah. Yeah. Julia Roberts, and Tom Cruise to be all in your, your yeah. movies from the, your books in the same year. That's that's huge. And they were both just okay movies. <laughs> I, I yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah I agree. But I, I like Pelican Brief a lot more than The Firm, but... Um, uh, yeah. So I enjoyed going off. Uh, so yeah, and Cool Runnings. I'm sure it was fun. Did I? I'm oh, sure, Cool Runnings. I'm sure yeah. Cool. Yeah. You know, I like the it. Jamaican bobsled team. Yeah. Sure, man. Why not? Classic. I'm, I'm down. <laughs> so now I'm going to move on to my top three. So yeah. my top. Three, those are just some of the mentionables. Uh, the Fugitive, directed by Andrew Davis, Harrison Ford, Tommy Lee Jones. The Fugitive. Great story. You've seen it. You like Very it? Good. Yeah. Enjoyed it. Very solid. Um, Tommy Lee Jones at this time was kind of 
becoming the greatest living actor, pretty close, yeah. greatest American living actor kind of guy yeah, for a while there. And, for sure. Nothing but respect for him and Harrison Ford, for sure. I love the story. Um, yeah, very good. I like how they covered it. I think it was really good. I, obviously, those two actors, you're, it's kind of a recipe for success. You have the two two, uh, <laughs> two classics. I mean, gosh. Great. Uh, Groundhog Day is my number two. <laughs> Bill Murray. Yeah. Uh, nah, fan, not so much. I'm not really a fan of Bill Murray, no. but I do like this movie. Um, and, I'm, and I am... <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of my two and three. Those those two are just... I just picked a couple that I liked more than the others. But my number one is one I actually... It's one of my all-time favorites of any genre, of any year. Um, Jurassic Park. You know what my problem with Bill Murray is? What? He's from Chicago. So. He's from Chicago. Yeah, He's a huge Cubs fan. I can't like him. That's yeah, right. This time. Yeah. I'm sure I'm, the, the guy's super talented and kind of cool. Yeah. But Ish. where's the, where's the <laughs> quick? And, and Groundhog no. Day, that falls straight into the odd category. For yeah. Me. Really? Yeah. It, it, no. First of all, I didn't see it, so go. Take oh, me, you have well. That, okay, okay so fair enough. I can't, cancel me out. C- yeah, you're cancel out. out. Um, Jurassic Park, though, number one. Steven Spielberg, man. Yeah. What a. Yeah. So still, what a summer blockbuster. Still holds up to this day. Yeah. What's crazy Great to me is... Great movie. So in All the way around. T- in 2018, we have... Uh, and we're very... I don't, I'm don't. i not sure the exact date this will air, but as of now, we've got four Jurassic Parks, about to have five. Um, and like you said, this one still lives up. This To me, this is my favorite. Of the Jurassic Park series, do you have a... It's either this one or the newest one. The newest one, yeah. But this I, one, it's this one. Yeah. It's this one. I like it. Um, I like how they were not... They didn't limit themselves to you know technology in '93. It didn't. It, you didn't lose anything because of '93. A lot of movies that are made in the early '90s lose a sense of that, especially with kids these days, because they don't want to give them a chance because oh, it looks like it's old, or they have like old timey stuff. To me, it doesn't. It's still futuristic. Um, obviously, the dinosaurs aren't around, but um, yeah. And I just thought I thought it is a is a timeless classic, not getting old. And uh, I'll see what I like of the what I think of the new one, but I'm pretty sure this is going to stay my favorite forever. Out, yeah. of, out of that series. But, I, uh, I, I couldn't add too much more other than it was an absolute blast from yeah. start to finish. Um, they made it look so the, realistic. Bought into the, yeah, lo- buying into the characters. Um, cared about Sam Neill. Cared about Laura Dern. Cared about Jeff Bloom. And all, go, Jeff? Gold Gold Bloom? Bloom. Yeah. Like, cared about them. Well, and uh, the, oh, uh, r- sir, uh, Richard Attenborough? Sure. He, yeah. Well, the old, the old guy. <laughs> yes. well, it was his park, right? Yeah, yeah his park. Yeah, yeah. What a great... He yeah. was great too. They were all great. No, that, you, you bring up a good point because sometimes you can have these crazy you know, explosions or you can have these type of CGI in movies and, and they try to do something really big with it and then they lack in the storytelling part. This actually does a good job of storytelling and you have a cool you know, it's a cool thing of dinosaurs. I mean, you just you know, get that in every movie. So the park, the dinosaurs. I feel like it all came together. So that's my favorite from 93. Do you have a favorite from that year? I do. I do. Um, I, I put Jet Jurassic Park as number three. Okay. I think that's well earned and sure. love the movie uh, um, Tombstone with Kurt Russell and Val Kilmer. Yes, the original Tombstone. Yeah. It, it, it was. It was. I'm sure there was one back in the 40s, but anyway. Okay. <laughs> Let's go with the 90s version of Tombstone. I can't back that up. Um, I, you know, everybody kind of knows the story. Oh, sure. It's uh, it's Wyatt Earp and his family and, and uh-huh. Doc Holliday. Um, I thought Kurt Russell and Val Kilmer. Had a crazy connection, chemistry, buddies. I'm big on buddy films. Yeah. Um, Kurt Russell was, you know, very um, him and his brothers. The, the story they tell about the brothers and uh, and and how they were connected, and how close they were, and how their wives played into their relationships. Um, Tombstone. Yeah. Really well done. So if you haven't seen Bill it. Paxton, the, they were they were surrounded by other great actors. I don't want to forget anybody. I think. Uh, yeah. You know, there was there was a, it was an ensemble of many great actors. Since you bring that up, question, did you like the newer version of Tombstone as well, or have you seen it? Didn't help, give it a shot? Help me out. Who's in it? I don't even no, remember. Didn't see it. Uh, the Vince Vaughn, like, uh, it was no, like three years ago. Like, yeah. Late 2000s or something? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we'll just go with no. We'll, we'll, we'll go, say you like this I, one more. It's easy to say I did not see it, because I yeah. did not. Yeah. It's a good movie. What's yeah. your number one? My number one, uh, near and dear. My kids and I, I think we've probably watched it, oh, somewhere around 200 times. <laughs> Oh, is that all? The Sandlot. Oh. I don't I know mean, how I missed that on my list. I mean, it's, it's just, you know, it's heartwarming. And it's, now, it took place, if I had, I think it took place in the 60s. So it took place a little yeah. bit before uh, my my time. Yeah. But let me tell you, we played a lot of Sandlot baseball. Yeah. Um, 
We got there. God, I love that movie. And yes. I don't know how I missed, I missed it, it. Uh, on my well, list. Yeah. And, and please fact check, because I looked two or three times to make sure I had the I'm right sure year. I'm sure you're right, yeah. <laughs> make sure I had the right year. Man, that's uh, a good Although not great with dates. It was great. It, 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 was, it was fun. fun. It was fun. Uh, the kids were... were uh, yeah, um, so baby, baby Ruth. Well, who is she? Yeah, yeah who's she? <laughs> Some the, great do, line the dog. Because every kid, every kid thinks the dog behind the fence will literally. Oh yeah, will it's, murder it's you in an instant. Hundred yes. feet tall. Yeah, it's hundred feet tall. Oh, yeah, and, and you're done if you get near it. So yeah, they were. There are a run. number of really good movies that have mostly a child cast. Mm-hmm. This being one of them. Yep. Really good. Jay, uh, it, it didn't rely on. Um, Sophomoric foul language, yeah, like maybe a predecessor did, uh, which was fun, yeah. Um, to each their own, to each their own. <laughs> and I enjoyed that movie, I enjoyed the heck out of uh, Bad News Bears and whatnot. But uh, yeah. this was much, Different. much, yeah. much more my, my, my level and fun. Well, cool. Uh, so, James Earl Jones, you know, the old oh, guy, I forgot he was in that, yeah. Old, yeah, he, well, he, yeah, yeah, he was, he was the guy that owned the dog, yeah, the old right? blind guy, yeah, the dog. Awesome. Um, so Solid. I'm going with Jurassic Park. You're going with Sandlot. Two very good movies. I am. Moving on to Franchise Battle. Now this one, Now I usually only spend about five or ten minutes on this. This episode is going to be a little bit longer, I have a feeling. So we're covering a lot. We're covering the entire Marvel Cinematic <laughs> Universe. But I know people are freaking out thinking, okay, there's 19. But what we're mainly going to discuss is the differences between Phase 1, 2, and 3 kind of discuss what we like the most out of those because we obviously can't cover every single one of these films it's just right. too much too much info right. but starting with phase one so you got iron man you got the incredible hulk iron man 2 thor captain america and then the avengers so first question is what is your favorite film from phase one my favorite film from phase one is the first avenger Captain America, the first Avenger. Cool. Now, is it close? Like, well, th- is there a close second, or is it, it, like, hands down? So, the conversation for me has to be crafted like this, um, because these, the, is it 19 films? I believe so. Okay, so these 19 films. I was homeschooled. My math might be off, though, oh, wow. so I have to, wow. <laughs> I have to okay. double check. I, I believe that's accurate. <laughs> wow. These 19 films, you know, are they're, they're very near and dear, um, uh, for for more reasons and more time that we don't have time to get into, um, I just counted. Yes, ni- nineteen. Uh, uh, Infinity War okay. was nineteen. So. so, but I have to. I have to. I have to have the conversation like this. I I do take out the Avengers, um, Age of Ultron, and Infinity War. They are separate for me. I actually have to remove them. From the from the so, entire so it's, list, so it's sixteen and three. Now the, oh, the reason okay. that's str- now the reason that's kind of strange, I'm sure, is because <laughs> I get it. It, it, it. The nineteen films are getting you to Infinity War. Yeah. So it's like, oh, great. So remove remove where the, where they're going. The payoff. Yeah. Remove the payoff from all the films and, and put them in their own category. Yeah. I, I for some reason I just have to. I don't know why. Uh, my favorite film, standalone in Phase One. To include the Avengers, is Captain America: First Avenger. I just think it is. It's. Uh, I love Chris Evans is fantastic. Yeah. Tommy Lee Jones makes you know a, a nice um, character. Um, I love going back to uh, pre World War Two and talking about uh, Tony Stark's dad. Yeah, seeing Howard having that yeah. included in in the story. <clears throat> if you're a fan of a, a book by Alex Ross called Marvels, um, that scene um, where Howard Stark has the car uh, is it the car? <laughs> I think he has yeah. a, like a floating car yeah, yeah, it yeah. kind of malfunctions doesn't it on so, stage? so if you look at all of that um, that where he's speaking mm-hmm. there, there's a there, that's kind of a scene um, from um, the first oh, issue the... of Marvels okay uh, in the gra- and, and so the, the comics you know they kind of play play a part and, and people that watch these films and gotcha. kind of what they yeah. can reference so it's Captain America First Avenger I thought they played the um, the Red Skull wonderfully uh, it's great yeah Great, great movie. I am going to pick Iron Man one uh, from that list. However, I I like I like all of them except the Incredible Hulk because I was I didn't really care for Edward Norton as the Hulk. No, I mean again, not hating on it. I just I really enjoy Mark Ruffalo. So um, to me, it just wasn't quite the same. But Iron Man one, the reason why I like Iron Man one the most, uh, being the first obviously is is part of that. And I did you know I see saw it over ten years ago now. Huge fan. It the, it was the technology. The technology did it for me. It blew me away. Seeing something like that, um, which was 
Not very common, man. Just did not see that kind of stuff in movies that much. And it wasn't done that well in that kind of world. And it was the start of this whole craziness of the 19 movie. So it just kind of has a, I don't know, there's a nostalgia kind of feel, like a memory attached to it. So that's part of it. But as far as a just good movie in general, I, yeah, I did really like uh, Captain America. And then uh, if you're including the Avengers, that was that was also another great memory of, of the, for the first time First time seeing all of them on screen together was, so, was insane. It's funny. When I talk about that, uh, or when you mention that, that will come back in this conversation. That yeah, okay. Here. Fair enough. I, um, I will move on yeah. to Phase 2 then. Yeah. So Phase 2 includes Iron Man 3, Thor The Dark World, Captain America Winter Soldier, Guardians of the Galaxy, Avengers Age of Ultron, and Ant-Man. So... <laughs> Do you have a favorite of uh, of those, or is it close? It, it's a tie. I mean, okay. It's that close. I, I thought Guardians of the Galaxy was the music is in my wheelhouse. Yeah, a lot of um, the music knows. Yeah, Peter Quill. Um, help me with the actor. Chris Pratt. So great. Um, Love him. Dave Bautista as Drax the Destroyer. He's great. Um, so the Gar- Guardians of the Galaxy was probably the most, I don't know if you had this question in here, but probably the most fun I ever had going to a movie. Oh, it, really? It, it, I'm glad you mentioned that because I have, I have I one had, as well. I <laughs> had a blast. Captain America Winter Soldier is a great movie. Like, yes. Like political intrigue, uh, action. Very um, relevant very with relevant. the timeline, I think, um, yeah. Hero, hero, conflicted heroes, um, Villains and and almost villains, uh, Black Widow. You can't go wrong. And Robert seen. Redford being in Captain America Two was cool. Seeing, so seeing a classic actor like that come into into twenty fourteen into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I thought that was cool. Adding him into it, um, he plays a good villain. I thought. Uh, I don't remember his character name honestly, but nah, I thought I, he did a good job. Just with the Hydra guy. <laughs> so it's between those two for you, I'm Guardians. Gonna, and... I am going to say they are at a dead heat for number one. That's fair. And there is no number two. I really enjoy. Yes, there is. Ant-Man. There is. Well, Amen. Yeah. Ant-Man was Paul Rudd. Ant-Man. Yeah, he's hilarious. Evangeline Lilly. <laughs> uh, I really enjoy. Yeah. Oh, I agree with you. I think Winter Soldier is great. I think so. First of all, I love anything that Anthony and Joe Russo do. I love they did the TV show Community. Really liked it. They did both Captain America two and three, and they obviously did Infinity War most recently. Um, I love the action scenes in it. The way that they film. I think they're really. They are unique in the way that they film their action scenes. A lot of times what they do is um, have the camera in motion moving around the actor while they're in motion as well. So a lot of action scenes are, are great and they have great choreography, but it's more common to have the camera still and just change angles and then see the actual characters do most of the motion. But Joe and Anthony Rousseau have kind of perfected this and I've watched a lot of behind the scenes stuff. It's really cool how they actually move the camera around the characters while they're in motion. So you've got the actors are moving and then the camera's moving as well. So it's got this crazy feel to it. I just love how the action scenes look. That's just my thought on it. Yeah, that 360 degree fluid movement as opposed to when you can absolutely feel a fight scene that is cut in scenes. Yes, exactly. Got I it. love, it. I, love I, it. I think they did a great job. Oh, one thing I want to point out about Guardians, number one, is I just watched it last week, which was the first time I watched it since it came out, since I saw it in theaters. I don't know why. Um, I was not crazy about it in theaters in the year 2014, and, I, and that's nothing against the film. That's probably more on me because... I didn't understand everything that was going on. That was the first, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, that was the first time we saw like all of Thanos because he was on the throne and he turned around, I think. Well, um, they hinted in, in 2012 with the Avengers of seeing his face when he smiled at the end. But uh, to see actually Thanos speak and, and have more of a role, you know, I, didn't really, I just didn't really get it. In 2014, uh, I thought it was good, but I just didn't, it didn't really stick with me. Watching it last week, loved it. Loved it, loved it. Now it has gone in my top three probably of all, of all the Marvel films. Um, it just makes more sense to me now that understanding what's going on in the story. So um, it's, it's funny. I mean, it is funny. It, yeah, it's, it's really legitimately funny. Funny. Yes, the, and lines, I think, the delivery is funny. The lines are funny. Yeah, um, very solid. Is as far as competing with nineteen other films, I think it's up there in the top three for me for for movies now. Uh, it is in, in the top of all the nineteen. It's a, it's the very top. Uh, so I'm I'm gonna say, gosh, I'm kind of the same boat as you. I'm kind of they're they're kind of a tie because I really like Winter Soldier, but I also so yeah. Let's just I'm gonna go the same with you. I'm gonna I'm gonna cheat on that one. We talk about um, I have a lot of conversations with a lot of friends um, about 
the history of Marvel Comics and the history of the Marvel Cinematic Universe uh-huh. and, and the choices that were made. And I think back about risks. Um, the Hulk, Spider-Man, of course, not being owned at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of these, uh, trying to figure out how they were going to incorporate some new characters. I think going to the Guardians of the Galaxy, um, I saw it as a risk. I saw it as a risk, and and that's one of the coolest things is when you risk and you put the good work in and you deliver the good product, I think that makes it even cooler for me. Captain America, I mean, it should be a home run, right? Yeah. Yeah, and they've delivered home runs. Yeah. And maybe that's even harder. Maybe it's even harder if the expectation is... Because the expectations are certainly higher, I harder. think. Maybe it's even harder. But, but That's I a thought, fair assessment, though. You know, that... some, someone, and I use this analogy often. If someone comes to me and says, hey, Ken... Do you have any money you want to invest in a superhero movie? I'm like, yeah. Is it Batman? Right. Is it? Is it? You know, yes. But if they say, hey, you want to invest Guardians. in, I'm like, man, I don't know about That's that. Straight. You got a raccoon and a tree. I'm and, like, I don't know about yeah, that. I don't know. I think I'm a, yeah. and, and, yet they, and yet they knocked it out. Of Marvel the park. has. I really it's think knocked it out of the park. Absolutely. No, and, I, and I think if you jump ahead 25, 30 years, I think these movies hold true, and I think these movies are going to be uh, held pretty high, not just in superhero movies. But I, I'll, I'll get into that a little bit more. But I'm just saying I think all of these, I think they have, especially with Kevin Feige, he's kind of a genius. Um, they have found the perfect in-between of superhero fun and silliness with wonderful storytelling and a great script of all these because there's not really a bad movie in these right. and to combine not just you know explosions bam bam pow pow you know the fun stuff and then to combine that with very good storytelling is very difficult and i think they've really just they yeah. found the secret sauce I love I love the conversations that I've had, um, been interviewed by the newspapers, um, and the conversation comes back to um, nerd culture, um, using funny fun terms like geek this and nerd that. Yeah. Well, you, you know, I said this about fifteen years ago, and I'll say it today. <laughs> what, what, tell me who's mainstream now? Now, now who? What's mainstream? And by mainstream, I I mean the vast majority of moviegoers yeah is it all of us going and enjoying these films and and, and, and racking up the numbers yeah or is, it, or is it or is it a fringe element of some come on yeah, you, is, you don't make the, two billion dollars no, no, based no, you, on a handful of nerds you do not that's uh that's a good so, point so this this is so indicative of a, a legitimate franchise done well and and done for the enjoyment of grandparents and great grandparents and moms and dads and and seven year olds and twelve year olds and of any background. Yeah. Um, so so I, I I just really enjoy moving past some of the old. Uh, Conversation. Well, yeah, and niche this and 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 sure, and yeah, closet no. fans and comic book. This. Yeah, so no, that's, a, great. that's <clears throat> a good point you bring yeah, up though, because is, prior so to obvious. prior to two thousand eight, so obvious. with the MCU being what it is now, I mean, it was kind of more of a handful. I mean, it was it was okay. The superhero movies weren't just watched by a handful of people prior to 2008 even. I mean, they were fairly mainstream. There was a number of, of decent ones. Um, Spider-Man was still popular. Tobey Maguire before 2008. Yeah, let's go back to the Richard Donner Superman films. The they Dark Knight crossing. trilogy started in 2005. Sure. Everybody watched. Everybody watched. Uh, yeah. Everybody watched. Yeah. Sure. sure. Yeah. But so the they have definitely done something different here. With the, you touched on it, Kevin just, Feige. Um, yeah. If, 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 you, if anybody ever wants to bore themselves to death and look over my timeline on Facebook, I've probably made six posts that all look similar going back over the last 10 years. And it, they, they simply say, whatever money, whatever um, compensation Kevin Feige gets, it is A, well-earned, and B, not nearly enough. Yeah. I, again, <laughs> Ken, how much does one man need? Are you sure Kevin Feige is worth $100 million a year? I'm absolutely certain he is. Yeah. Well, that, make, that's how successful. That's how successful. This is this is equivalent 
You think Michael Jordan's six rings? No. That's not equivalent. What Kevin Feige has done is, in the film industry the charts, is like the Tiger Woods and Michael Jordan and uh, Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> it's, like, Tiger, it's like a number one. Tiger Woods might be the only analogy because, yeah. again, if, if it's Tiger in the field and you're taking Tiger, that's unprecedented. Yeah. And no one else – we've had this conversation. Yeah, sure. And no one else can ever get involved in that. And Tiger Woods did that for eight years. Ten, ten at, years. at least ten. Well, yeah. So Feige, Feige, I'll, I'll give, I'll give Tiger Woods that run to compare to Feige's run because it is. He's a Tiger Woods of cinema. I'm telling you, pre-scandal Tiger Woods. Well, let's go. Uh, let's go saying, on to. <laughs> it's, it's incredible what Feige's done, and he is. It is. He's amazing. Phase three, mm-hmm. we've got, we got a lot. Uh, yeah, well, so yeah, phase three. Done yet. Captain America Civil War, Doctor Strange, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, Spider-Man Homecoming, Thor Ragnarok, Black Panther, and Avengers Infinity War. So there are more in Phase 3, however, this is as far as we've seen, as we've gotten. So Infinity War being the most yeah. recent. So out of those films um, so far in Phase 3, do you have a favorite? Is, is it, it impossible? It, it is. <laughs> and a it's a big favorite because there's a lot of good ones. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Again, not a bad film in the bunch. Look at these ratings, even though I'm not a big, I'm not a Rotten Tomatoes guy. No, um, nor am I. And, yeah, and the I reason for sense. Rotten Tomatoes and, and me not agreeing is because yeah. they seem to do 100% or 5. And, and not, <laughs> they're like all or nothing. Right. And IMDb is, is the other rating okay. that I okay. more so agree with. But uh, So on the top of the list, Guardians 2. <laughs> it's, I think I it's nearly impossible. Uh, f- quick yeah, question though, let's sidetrack for a second. Do you uh, think Civil War, f- Civil War Guardians two? Even though I think Civil War is an Avengers movie, but that's fine. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Do you yeah. feel that they've gotten better? Each phase has gotten better. Do you think two is better than one and three is better than two or yeah. no? Well, three is the best phase. Uh, of far. all, yeah, I agree. Uh, by far, yes, by far, it's not even, not even Ragnarok. A because, they really made a change in Thor's yeah, personality yeah. And, and who that character is. Because I think there's there's some room to discuss. To be fair, to, to to not be just to be honest, there's probably some room to discuss Hulk and the two Thor films in the first three in the first two phases. Mm, kind of, it, kind of weak. Is that what you? Weak compared to these other monsters. Yes. Yes. I agree. So, so there's no nothing. There's nothing. Let me look again. This, this, I'm not wrong. There is nothing weak about Phase Three. Yeah. No, I would not say not a wink, link in the chain. I have the so. a least favorite is Doctor Strange. I appreciate the character. I like him, but I will tell you this: he's like. Um, um, how do I relate to them? In, uh, in music, it'd be like I like him more featured on a track. So I like a little bit of Doctor Strange. I didn't care for the entire thing. That's just me personally. A lot of people like it. Um, so so for me, I like Doctor Strange included with the others. I wasn't a huge fan of just a movie with only him. That's just me. Um, so Phase 3, for me, that's the least favorite. But I don't know. Um, Infinity War was my favorite of Phase 3. Yeah, I saw that. But uh, Homecoming. Spider-Man. I really like Ragnarok a lot, though. Spider-Man Homecoming, um, I mean, because Spider-Man shows up in Civil War, and we we waited 10 years for that. Yeah. And it was like, thank Finally. the Lord. And I like Tom Holland. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So we get, a good job. we get him in Civil War, and we got thumbs up everywhere, and everybody's pumping their fist, right? And that's great. Uh, Homecoming, again, so good. Just... Maybe not my favorite of the group. Sure, Ragnarok was great. Uh, Ragnarok was excuse me, very, Ragnarok was very good. Black Panther very good. So for me, it's probably Infinity War or Guardians Two. That's fair. I like yeah. those. You're a big Guardians fan though. Now that you, I, I just I know. That, yeah, it's crazy. Um, so for me, I really liked I liked Spider Man when I first saw it. Mm-hmm. Until I saw Ragnarok, and I was like, wow, that's can it get any better? And then I saw Black Panther, I was like, wow, no, that was really good. And then I saw Infinity War, like, wow, okay, can it pop, can a movie get more fun? So what we were talking about earlier, you said, which movie was the most fun you've ever had seeing a movie? Probably one. Guardians, Guardians 1. Oh. So for me, I've it's never enjoyed it's being... Yeah, it is. I've never enjoyed being in a theater more than when I watched Infinity War. I have never had... Like, sometimes when I see a movie... I think okay. Then I go home and think about it, and then you kind of reevaluate, and okay, it's great. And then, and then uh, you know, you see it again, and 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 you you realize some things that you didn't see in the first one. But what the difference in Infinity War for me 
is the fact that I knew from 30 seconds in, this is a great movie. Like, I loved it from the moment it started. It, was, uh, it wasn't one of those, where, okay, well, let's see once the story gets started. For me, I was just like, bam, I love it. And I loved it all the way through. And I saw it twice, uh, and I loved it just as much the second time. So to me, that was the most fun movie I've seen. But uh, yeah, you're exactly right. Mm -hmm. There's not a, uh, a bad film in the bunch. And uh, again, my favorite from that phase is Infinity War. So, um, and what was, what's your final answer on that one? Guardians 2. Guardians 2, right? Yeah. Very good. Wow. We could probably talk about this forever. And uh, yeah, and good. the upcoming, just I'm going to just briefly mention, we got Ant-Man and the Wasp and Captain Marvel before Avengers 4 comes out. Any thoughts on those? Yeah. Are we, should we expect anything Absolutely. Tons of specific? thoughts. My thoughts are <laughs> Kevin Feige is going to, <laughs> he's going to continue to do brilliant things. Um, Captain Marvel with no, I, I don't know any spoilers. So there's, there would be no spoiler conversation. This is just me having fun with 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 the the movies. Yeah. Um, the Captain Marvel film is going to go back and grab you about five years before Iron Man or ten. Uh, oh. Okay. Yeah. And it's gonna it's gonna run you like full circle all the way back up to oh, cool. Avengers four. I didn't realize and, that. Yeah, and, and it's gonna be amazing. I can't wait. Um, and, and I think Paul Rudd and Evangeline Lilly um, and Michael Douglas. It to include a great supporting group of Michael Pena and uh, I like T.I. He's funny. And yeah, T. yeah, yeah. They, they're wonderful. They're going to have a blast with, uh, and the, the previews that you can watch now on TV or online um, look really fun. Uh, and they don't need to, I, I, I'm fine with Ant-Man not tying directly into the Avengers films. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's. I think he's a fun inclusion. I think he yeah. was great in Civil War, and I really, I really like how he plays along with the other characters. He's funny. He's goofy. He's yeah. It's a fun time. Yeah, fun time. Um, do you think? I have a quick question for you. As far as so we know, Infinity War. You know, fifty percent of everybody disappears. Do you think that that comes into play with Ant Man or Captain Marvel? Do they Captain Marvel? Yes. Yeah. Um, Ant Man. I can't. I. I don't have a theory. I, don't I have so. a theory. Yeah. I don't think so. just don't a quick know. thought. I feel like the after credit scene, Paul Rudd walks out of a building or whatever it is, and then he sees everybody disappear. I don't know. That's a guess <laughs> because similar to the after credit in Infinity War, you know Sam Jackson and whatever, they see their world, you know, start to disappear. I feel like it could kind of bring full circle Ant Man back into their world and kind of because I don't think it's going to come into play in the whole majority of the film, but I do think they might include that at the end. I don't know. Let's just guess. Yep. Um, cool. Moving on to the guest take. So this is uh, this is a fun one. This is all about you. Uh -huh. So I've got ten questions. You can do rapid fire. Or you can take your time and tell some stories. Whatever you want to do. I'll do my best. First of the ten is your. What was your first movie going experience? So what movie was it? Uh, what year? Uh, what so again, uh, the best I can remember. Yeah. 1968. I'm four years old, and it's Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Cool. And, and I'm a huge fan. And as I go back and look and watched it, you know, I don't know how many times, um, I just read a little bit about it before I came over here today. Dick Van Dyke? It is Dick Van Dyke. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I read about it before I came over here today based loosely on Ian Fleming, the James Bond yeah, author's the writer, book. Yeah, Had no idea. A book he wrote called... I didn't know that either. He wrote a book called Chitty Chitty Bang Bang the Magic Car. I'm, I'm not sure how loosely it can be based. <laughs> Sounds yeah. like it's... But the musical... Sounds pretty close. But they, they, they created the musical and all the, the dancing. Cool. Big Dick Van Dyke fan from that era. Were you blown away at the movies? Was this like uh, a big thing, or was it? Uh, uh, yeah, no, spe super special. Yeah, yeah, cool. In in my ear, in my days, uh, uh, early days, sure. uh, drive-in movies, going to see King Kong. I mean, you're just like uh, jaw dropping. Godzilla, <laughs> yeah. um, the big, the big. Uh, I've yet to see a movie in a drive-in. I'd love to. Just yeah, so you should. Being a movie fan, um, and there's a few in the uh, 50 miles away or so. Yeah. Um, so. The, my my best recollection, and if someone had to to make me, I, I'm gonna say Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, 1968. I'm four years old, and to this day I love it. Just love everything about it. Uh, the music and, and and the colors, and it was a British musical. Fun Very stuff. good, fun cool. stuff. So, what was the last movie you saw in theaters? Saw Num solo number two, la Solo last night. Solo, okay. What do you think? Solid effort. Um, I bought into uh, some things, and no spoilers. No spoilers. Uh, <laughs> This won't air for a while. You can do spoilers if you want. Nope. Really cool. <laughs> so what I was telling um, some people after I saw the movie was um, there are some legitimate swerves. Legitimate surprises and legitimate swerves. Not easy. Not easy to do. 
did did you know was no. this something that was um, I don't written or, or in in some type of comics or something? What how Han met Chewie was that or did they just create that? Not a first of all, I'm not a fan fiction novel Star Wars fan. Okay, couldn't even begin to tell you. So not sure. No. I was no, curious. I couldn't it, maybe couldn't tell you. Yeah, I don't know. Um, no idea. Really enjoyed it. Solid effort. Sure. It's underperforming financially, so I'm a little concerned yeah, what's going on there. It is. I, I, I like Ron Howard. He directed it, and I... I and his brother makes... Oh, here's a spoiler for you. Good. Ron Howard's brother makes an appearance in Solo. Who's his brother? That's the... the well, what's the, the actor's name, then? Oh, and the... It, the, the character or the actor? Yeah, Ron Howard's brother. Oh, well, something Howard. So, Clint. <laughs> Clint. Clint, okay. Clint Howard. I did not realize that. Clint Howard makes an appearance in all Ron's movies. I like Donald Glover, who played... Uh, Solid. Landon. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, so good movie. Uh, I, I I just can't believe anybody would go and hate it, but everybody's entitled yeah. to their well, own. I, cer- I certainly oh, didn't you're, hate yeah. it. If I don't you go think and it don't was. Like it, it didn't blow me away, but I didn't hate it. Yeah, that yeah. was fun. But uh, you're right good about effort. it underperforming. So yeah, I'm watching those dollars going. Out. So, <laughs> Something's not right. Yeah, someone's got to eat. Well, now, it's hard. On. I mean, Disney owns so much; they have so many movies come out every <laughs> yeah. year. But it's hard for um, them. Oh, it's, Disney owns too much. Yeah, well, come, no. They, come on, man. They own a lot, and they have a lot that comes out every year, and it is probably difficult for them to see Infinity War make $2 billion this quickly and then have that one. I don't know what it's made right now, but it's not a lot. It's not a lot compared in, in, in today's blockbuster yeah. movies. Right. And number three, movie that made you cry or become emotional. Uh, no, man, I'm talking about— There's a lot? I'm talking about— <laughs> Oh, yeah. Now, the one that comes to mind, I'm talking about full emotional breakdown. Ugly cry. Yeah, mm. What's it's that? not the whole nine. I'm young. I'm about ten. I should look the year up. I'm sorry. So you're, it's TV. So I'm sorry. We're gonna we're gonna go to TV. Yeah. It's a it's a movie called Brian's Song. Okay. Uh, Billy D. Williams. Yeah. And uh, James Caan, and it's about two oh, wow. Chicago Bears football players. We can't like them then. It's from Chicago. True. Good point. <laughs> Don't like it. Um, <laughs> they played uh, real life people. This is a real life event. Okay. All right. So I'm about ten years old. Uh, it's late, late seventies, mid late mid seventies. Excuse me. Yeah, mid seventies. And uh, br- uh, Billy D. Williams plays Gale Sayers, Hall of Fame running back. Mm-hmm. And at training camp that year, he meets Brian Piccolo. And Brian Piccolo, uh, yeah, one just happens to be an African American and, and a Caucasian. And it it, it made for a. <laughs> I think we can all learn a lot from those guys. Like a good buddy movie kind of thing? Well, are they friends? They were. They yeah. were at, well, they were absolutely friends. Uh, Brian Piccolo uh, dies in you know, early 20s of cancer, and it, it follows their relationship, their lives. And, of course, I, I mean, I'm talking balling. Dang. You're not going to start crying now, are you? I might. Okay. We're and, and let me on. tell you how much I loved it. Okay. Let me tell you how much I loved it and, and how much it means to me to this day after all these years. There was a remake. Uh-uh. That's not happening. Not even close. I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't. I would never. Oh, you didn't watch it. I would never watch it. Okay, that's fair. That's you want to leave your memories with that one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, sure. and, and how absolutely amazing it was. <laughs> well, cool. Killed me. I haven't seen it. Um, I'm not going to see it though because I don't want to cry. Oh, I cried. So, <laughs> number four, worst movie you've ever seen. Okay, so th- this this has to be prefaced by saying, yeah, no, it don't have to be prefaced. <laughs> I I will. N- <laughs> it's up to you. <laughs> I, you know. Look, I, I think Ben Stiller. It's I think it's a Ben Uh-oh. Stiller. So Ben Stiller, you know, does he, it start with the word zoo? No. All right, not Zoolander. No. All right, it's it's Starsky and Hutch. Really? Because here's the problem. I didn't see it. Here's the deal. Buddy TV show, like or mid nineteen seventies. Uh-huh. I'm ten years old. It's ABC. I think it's Friday nights. And they're my they're my guys, man. I mean, these yeah. are these are these are the, these are my dudes. These are I it's, don't know. It's tough it's, to mess with remakes. It's man. my favorite TV series of all time. Did not I, know that. I got oh. the box set. I've rewatched it a few times. Um, they were when you're ten, and everything's about your. See, to me, television and music and film and entertainment and and the things that aren't life and death. Yes. I, I to me, I think that they are uh, categorized by by your age and, and what sure. you're digging when you're ten and twenty and thirty and forty yeah. and fifty and sixty. And maybe even how you relate to them with your kids. So. Uh, I'm 10 years old, from 10 to 15, or from 12 to 16, or however old I am, and I'm, I'm watching Starsky and Hutch. So, so Ben Stiller gets a hold of the, the, the property, and they make this movie. I'm never going to forgive him. It's not coming off the page. If I ever see him, I will absolutely tell him. Slap him silly. No, you know, as much as I'd like to be that, yeah, but not I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to lie, because I'm not going to slap him. Yeah. But I am going to tell him, dude, <laughs> that was so bad. Because what it could have been is this. What it could have been is the next lethal weapon. Oh, Why man. not? 
Yeah. Why wouldn't you? What play? route did they go? Is it goofy? Be, it beyond it's spoofy. Beyond spoofy, satirical, uh. goofy. Like they made them into total slips. Ugh, it bothers me. Cannot tell you how much I hated it. I left the theater just. That's how. And I, and I knew going in because I mean, obviously, I saw the previews. Yeah. But I still had to see the movie. Yeah, you want to check it out? That's how. See, now it's fair to disagree with this for you or anyone else out there, but that is how I personally felt about Luke Skywalker and the Last Jedi. I felt like they made a joke out of my hero from a kid watching Star Wars, and you know, personally, didn't care for it. Yeah. So. I mean, yeah. some people don't feel that way, and that's fine. I, uh, just personally, that's just my thoughts on it. So. Yeah, no, I, I, but it, it's, it's, it bothered yeah. me. You know, I was like, ah, I don't want to see him that way. And I'm sure you probably don't want to see those guys that you grew up watching. No, but made fools of them. Portrayed in that manner. Yeah. I hated it. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not even kidding. <laughs> yeah, um, it's not life or death, so I can move on. But yeah. it was horrible. Not um, losing sleep over it, it, but I did for a while. Did you? <laughs> okay, yeah. Thank and you the casting, the casting was pretty cool. Um, really, Ben Stiller and, and Owen Wilson. I mean, why not? But why wouldn't they have... On paper, for, sounds good. Formula. Formula, right? Yeah. Why not try to recreate the formula the best you can with a really cool, buddy, funny, action cop series? Yeah. And instead, they just mucked it up. Trashed it. Even Dang. Snoop Dogg as... Uh, Snoop Dogg? Is he in the movie? So, um, can't let this escape you. Um, Snoop Dogg's Huggy Bear. Huggy Bear is the local informant. Who, oh, wow. who has fun and makes money. I had money, no idea he was in the movie. You know, in, in the bar scene and might, might sure. have a girl or two yeah, on the side. <laughs> and he's that kind of guy, right? And, and anyway. It's not good. I'm just, dis- I'm, I'm absolutely frustrated and disappointed 20 years later that they just destroyed that movie. Must have been bad. Uh, movie you're embarrassed to say you've never seen. And I do want to clear, I, I always say this with everyone, I want to clarify, not so much uh, embarrassed, but maybe just a movie people will be surprised you've never seen. Okay, so I don't really have an answer. Okay. But here's what I'm going to go. Because there's a lot of them. Okay. Probably. But here's what I'll go with for sure, because it's fun conversation. So I'm not a horror movie fan. Sure. Nor am and, I. And um, I remember the 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 storm that The Exorcist caused. Ugh. And Yuck. I, I jokingly say, I, I, I am so comfortable and so happy to tell whoever in conversation. I have not seen it, nor will I ever see it. Yeah. And that's just my little tagline there. And they laugh. But it's a popular enough movie that, yeah, I understand. I mean, it's, it's pop culture. It's it's yeah. iconic. Every, every Kids, your age, younger, the yeah. early 20s, the late teens, the old people like me, my brothers that are in their 60s. Yeah. Every, <laughs> well, I'm with you on this one. I'm not I'm yeah. not much into horror, but there there are a number of popular horror films I've never seen, so that makes sense to be yeah. on the list. I'm know? just, and, 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 I, and I think it might surprise some people that have never seen it, um, but there, there's probably some some more current franchised pop culture movies. You've seen that, The Godfathers? Yeah. Yeah. I'm a big fan. Big fan of the first one for sure. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Cool. Um, favorite scene in a movie, if you have one? Backtracking, for sure. Okay. Um, to see Thor, Captain America, and Iron Man together the first time. Well, at least what comes to my mind is the fight scene in the in the woods. There, there's a plane there. They, oh, yeah, yeah, They yeah. come out of the plane and Thor when, comes. Yeah, in. Thor grabs Loki out of the, the ship or whatever yeah. and brings him down, drops yeah. him off, and then Iron Man starts fighting and Captain America jumps out. and So, so when they join in the woods, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, I mean, I don't know that anything's ever better than that moment because yeah. once you've done it, you can't, it, well, you do it again, it's still cool, but yeah. and it's still cool. They're all still cool. Yes. But to see it for the first time. And first time. And because to me, uh, again, Feige, whoever, uh, yeah. Robert Downey Jr., Chris Evans, Chris Hemsworth. Yeah, it's hard to beat those guys. That is that is that crew of people. Wow. I mean, so so when they did that thing together for the yeah. first time on screen, wow. I was a pretty happy guy. Very cool. Yep. Um, number seven, your dream co-star. So let's I, pretend know, that you're an actor and you're uh, you get to pick who you want to be with. I hope I'm not missing this, but I think in the last ten years, I think it's been Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. Wow, see that surprised me. I had no idea. Are you yeah. a big? You've seen a lot of his movies. Big fan, or I've I've seen quite a few. Okay, and I'm a big fan. Just really like him. I, yeah, I do. He's I, very talented. <laughs> I, no, I like him. Yeah. Nothing against that. Not even sure how. I can do you have it. a favorite Matthew McConaughey movie? Uh, that's is it too hard to pick. Did no. you see Interstellar? I did. Yeah, pretty, pretty solid. Yeah, enjoyed it a lot. I thought he did a very good, very good, good job with his role. Here's very solid. Here, here's one. Um. You might need to help me, but but um, 
time frame? You know, uh, 15 years roughly? ago. Okay. Uh, small part, very interesting. Him and Jody Foster, and uh, it was about uh, contact. Oh, and yes. It, I did see it. I saw the okay. theaters, in fact. Another space type of movie. Huh? Am I crazy? No, Wasn't that not crazy. Movie? It was about contacting aliens. Yeah. <laughs> I was very young when it came out, but I, I remember that. Matthew McConaughey played a spiritual advisor. So he was one of the kind of guys that would get invited to the White House. He kind of had the pulse of the nation as it related to faith. Um, they may not have ever mentioned Jesus or Christianity, but they mentioned the, the nation's faith and spirituality. Sure. And, and he, he's kind of a, um, a leader, a, a pastor. Okay. He's a southern guy. Texas guy. I didn't even remember him being in it. I remember well, it, Jody. It, no, I'm sure you're right. Well, they had uh, a love. They, they were. It was a love interest for Jody Foster. Oh, really? Which I remember her being in. It. Which uh, no jokes, uh, no jokes. But Jody Foster's not known as a leading lady in, in being romantic in films with men. Sure. And it was it was good. You it was liked it. You like how? Yeah. F- cool. They, they made me believe again that they had tremendous chemistry. Uh, man, woman type of stuff. Well, cool. Stuff. Big McConaughey fan. Thought that was great. Again, small part. Not yeah. a big part. Yeah, but he did good with, with what he had. Yeah, uh, cool. I'm sure I'm, again, overlooking some things. Just a big fan of his. Nice. Matthew was good. Yeah. So number eight yeah. is favorite line in a movie. So I, I brought it up. I'm not going to bring it. It's, yeah, you it, can it, look it up. It's a tad long, um, but and, and everyone knows it. So it's nothing that it's nothing I had to, it's, it's not a uh, obscure reference. Okay. It's uh, when Rocky Balboa tells his son, let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are. It will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is going to hit as hard as life. But I ain't about, it ain't about how hard uh, you hit. It's about how hard you get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Delivered uh, cool. by which, Stallone and the which later Rocky, Rocky movie is that from? It was a lot. It was uh, um, Rocky Balboa? Yeah. Okay. Rocky Balboa. Cool. And uh, big fan of that uh, franchise. Big fan of his. And that's been championed on posters and postcards, I'm sure. And everything yeah. you can think of. Good and, line. Uh, I mean, I don't Cool. Uh, going back to Jurassic Park, uh, Jeff Gold. Goldblum. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. Struggle with uh, that one. Uh, I, I, and I like the way he delivers. I actually like the way he his cadence. Jeff Goldblum's cadence and the way he delivers lines. Very unique. Sp- speaking patterns. Yes. Very unique. It will get your attention. Yeah. He will hold your attention. Yeah. And when he said, um, God created dinosaurs, God kills dinosaurs. God creates man, man kills God. Man creates dinosaurs. Man creates dinosaurs. Uh, yeah. Another good one. Probably my two favorites. Yeah. If I had to think of two. Or something. But You're there, right but, about that, though. But there's a lot of a lot Jeff of Goldblum ones. really grabs your attention. He does have a way of speaking. Trump He's like Bill Clinton. Trump. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's forget that reference. Uh, but the, he does have a good way of speaking. Um, I do love it. So, <laughs> I love, I love his <laughs> Number nine, guilty pleasure movie. So a yeah. movie that either maybe tanked at the box office or that a lot of people didn't like, but you did like. So tanked at the box office, got resurrected on streaming and whatever the, the, the main Online secondary stuff. line was, yeah. and got and then got three pictures. Pitch perfect. Oh. So I, I love the fact that I love... The first one tanked? It, it, it didn't make money. I don't know. Oh, I don't have the number. Didn't, didn't make money. Yeah, yeah. really. Um, it is again. So it's it's right up there with Guardians. It's a part. It's a fun. It's it's, <laughs> it's love the music. <laughs> fun. I like it too. Yeah. No. Super funny. Um, got into a point where I probably watched it. You know, once one summer, once every week or two. Really um, cool. Still like it. Uh, a lot of good music in that. No, I've seen. Sadly, two and three didn't deliver. Yeah. I saw the first two. I haven't seen the last one, but so um, first one's your favorite, right? Yeah, th- th- three my th- three didn't deliver until the last five minutes. Then they put a nice ending to it. One not not always one of my favorite. I don't think there's any comparison. Uh, music was fun. Characters were fun. Very funny. Um, good time. 
love the movie, and I think some people are like, wow, you really like that? Of course. <laughs> but, but, you know, really, people that do know me, it's really not a stretch. Yeah. Uh, it's not like, I think it's the people that kind of kind of know me a little bit that might think it's a stretch. Yeah, a If you know me, you're like, oh, it's Murphy. That makes sense. <laughs> Number 10, last question. Favorite movie of all time. Is this possible? Can you pick one? It is. Maybe a couple? I, I, it, 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 it's, well, it's, it's, not, it's not easy. And, and, I, and I could probably change my mind. It was Pulp Fiction for a very long time. Um... I think my favorite movie of all time is The Last Samurai with Tom Cruise and Ken Watanabe. Oh, dang. I, I, I'm not even sure why, but I, I just think it tells a really great story. Um, that should and, be and on even, my list of movies I'm embarrassed to say I've never seen that. Yeah. Because I haven't. Maybe. I mean, maybe. And it's, it's, per, it's like one of those personal things that's hard to even explain. Yeah. Um, just enjoy it a lot. I, I think a, a lot of it captured me. One, um, Tom Cruise's um, disenfranchisement with the United States government um, after, I guess, the Civil War. It was during, it was during the expansion of the West. Um, so, late 1880s, late okay. 1800s. Sure. Uh, I should be better with my. I can look it um, up later. Yes, and I'm, then and then as um, and, and then he, you know, through through really interesting circumstances, he winds up in Japan as the Japanese people were torn between um, the old culture and obviously what was coming. The old com- the old culture was the emperor and feudal Japan and samurais, and the new culture was. Not. Yeah. It just wasn't. And he got over there and he got all mixed up in that. And in, and, and uh, I, Ken Watanabe played a a lead. So they had like they had like a and again I'm sorry I can't speak better to this. Oh, you're fine. But they had the emperor had like a cabinet. Sure. And the emperor had people. And Ken Watanabe um, is is a samurai, and and he's actually a part of the emperor's inner circle. Okay. But he was being forced out by all of the the new ideas and the new culture that was coming in. Oh, okay. And uh, Tom Cruise winds up in Ken Watanabe's... Um... So he's like, does oh. Tom Cruise lead them or is he like on the cabinet? Well, so they, they, they happen upon Tom Cruise in battle and uh, Tom Cruise kills Ken Watanabe's brother-in-law. His sister's husband, oh. and Ken Watanabe watches Tom Cruise battle these samurais, and uh, he refuses to let his men kill Tom Cruise, and they take him back, and he's not really captive. They just he's just there, and he and over the course of a couple of years, you know, he kind of ingratiates himself, and it's just a great story. It's really fun. I'm sorry I can't speak better to it. No, it's I'll it's have to great, check it out. It's a great story. Cool. It's a great story. Uh, yeah, it's period. You know those period pieces. Mm-hmm. You know it's one of those period pieces. When you do them well, they can be really fun. Yeah, and cruising, for cruising, sure. cruising, cruising. And that's fitting that you have your favorite movie of all time with with Tom Cruise because yeah. he is who we're going to discuss who yeah. they play best with. Yeah. So we're going to, talking more about Tom Cruise. So um, so I'm going to mention a few of his honorable movies and then I'll pick up. Uh, at my favorite, and uh, it's kind of hard for me to pick because Tom Cruise is one of those guys who's been in. We were talking earlier about his IMDb list is 50 pages long, and uh, so he's been in a ton of stuff. Obviously, classic actor, um, obviously famous in so many things. But Jerry Maguire, great movie. Uh, he was Maverick in Top Gun. I could say I could just say great movie after every single one of these. But Ethan Hunt in the Mission Impossible series, which there's another one coming out. That looks great. Fallout. Um, he was <laughs> Les Grossman in Tropic Thunder. Did you see Tropic Thunder? Last year. Uh, <laughs> less than a year ago. Funny stuff. So great. Hilarious. Uh, Daniel, I don't even know how to say, I don't remember the last name. It was Kathy, Kathy in A Few Good Men. I don't remember how they pronounced the last name. But anyway, hey, A Few Good Men. Kathy. Kathy? That sounds hard. I haven't I seen it in a long time, so I don't so, remember. Yeah. Um, Mitch McDeer in The Firm. Cole Trickle in Days of Thunder, uh, Stacy Jackson in Rock of Ages. So Rock of Ages, I haven't talked to you about this, I don't think ever, but you seem like you might like Rock of Ages. Loved. Yeah, loved? loved. Okay, cool. So the music great. delivered. He great. was good in that? He was great. Yeah, pretty big role, right? He was kind of the main? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Kind of. 
Cool. He, he played the rock star. This and doesn't hold it off. Nice. This is gonna surprise probably a lot of people, and um, I don't know why I liked Edge of Tomorrow so much. This is probably not fair that it's I'm picking it as my favorite, but he played Cage in Edge of Tomorrow. He's got a lot of other fantastic roles, but for some reason I just really liked Edge of Tomorrow. So I'm picking Edge of Tomorrow, but he's got so many it would be literally impossible just to pick one. But I really enjoyed Edge of Tomorrow. Yeah, man. So, go back to uh, go back to the Outsiders. That was early on. Taps. He was pretty young in that, a right? Teenager, right? Yeah. Taps and the Outsiders, um, and, and then I think he, I think Top Gun might have been the breakout. Yeah, I think maybe that was uh, Top Gun. Gosh, what was it? Eighty six, eighty five, eighty six. Yeah, right around there. Yeah. yeah. Um, Do you have well? So, being the favorite movie of all time, I would assume that's your favorite Tom Cruise movie too, like Last Samurai. It uh, is. Do you have any other? Well, so this is really crazy. You know, I, I talk about McConaughey and. And Kevin Costner, I know I mentioned him right yeah, when, yeah. when we started talking. Um, t- Jerry Maguire and A Few Good Men are probably two and three behind The Last Samurai. Yeah. So how crazy? A lot of so how famous cra- quotes. From how those is two. how is it? How crazy is it <laughs> to say that they may be my favorite three movies ever? And they all have Tom Cruise. Well, they're his movies. I mean, they're, his, good- they're his vehicles. Period. Yeah. I'm glad we movies. chose him to talk about because you love uh, this guy. It's, it's, I know. Uh, I loved him in all these films. Uh, now, Days of Thunder. Okay. I mean, pretty. You know, I had to throw I mean, that on there, but I'll be honest, I've never seen it. You know, I put it on there just because I knew it was kind of a popular yeah. at the time. But, no, right. uh, so, but he's, he's great. Yeah, I think, I, and I think the things, if I knew anything about him, and I'm not sure that I do, but, but I, I think he is... I, you know, I think he and Dwayne Johnson and Will Smith and some of these guys. I tell my I tell my kids this all the time, and, and I believe it to be true. Tom Cruise, Dwayne Johnson, Will Smith, just to name three. They're 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 where they're at at fifty. Just just absolute hard work. I'm talking the kind of like you're the first guy at the gym. Yeah. You're the, you're the first Hardest guy Hardest worker in the room. That's what Dwayne Johnson always talks about. And I believe it. And, and, and I believed it before he said it on that commercial or whatever it was. Uh, I tell my kids all the time, I, I don't believe that these guys are lucky. And I don't believe that... I think they sacrifice. I, I don't care how much money they make. I don't. Yeah. And I don't, I don't care that they have maids and butlers and <laughs> yeah. someone washes their cars. I don't care. Yeah. I will tell you that they sacrifice and they work tirelessly. And when I mean tirelessly, I mean hard. And I believe that. And I believe it started at a young age. And I believe that they didn't want to lose their spot. And, and they continue to be great because of it. And, and I believe that. Now, I don't know them. And yeah. we don't hang out. Right. And and I'm not even telling you they're nice people. I but don't know. I, 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 believe I think they, I know what you're saying. You don't get to where they are just by chance, just by man, having a, a, a face for Hollywood. You get there by hard work. I, I, I'm I just telling you that I believe that. Yeah. Now, and, I tell my kids, and I tell my kids that I believe that most of the time. And I'm not big on the... He looks good. <laughs> yeah. She looks good, and they're lucky, and they don't do nothing but lay around all day and eat cookies. <laughs> no, I don't believe that. So yeah. I think that's the thing I think that's cool about Curtis. Sure. I think he works hard. I think he works really hard. Um, I think he. I think he's gotten good, gotten really good. I'm not saying he's the best. I would say that Tom yeah. Cruise is. Um, if there, if this isn't, this isn't a real category, but he was, he is the best, in my opinion, in um, sacrificing for the role. In the fact that, so let me give you a few examples here. In the most recent Mission Impossible movie, which is about to come out, Fallout, yeah. I think he gets into his roles insanely well, such as he broke his foot while yeah. filming, jumping across a cliff, <laughs> and he decided as he was hanging from a building <laughs> about to crawl up that he knew that he broke his foot yeah. and decided to continue running just to get the shot. Now, there are a lot of people out there who would say, cut and, and someone grabbed me off this building right. he uh, he does all of his stunts that is insane to me yeah. he took uh, multiple months to learn how to fly a helicopter just so he could spin a real helicopter flight in this uh, in this fallout the new Mission Impossible movie because he did not want to use CGI for it he didn't want to fake it he wanted to actually do he wanted to twist the helicopter upside down on his own now there are plenty of actors who can just say throw me in a green screen and let's do this and get it over with the guy's I don't know, he commits, is all I, I'm saying. I, and I give him 
the respect, sometimes I think that might be a little over the top. I do. Uh, and yeah. if I'm the guy, again, I, again I, can, I can put this in different um, conversations. Yeah. Man, if I'm bankrolling this movie... I'm gonna have to ask him to knock it off. Oh no, yeah, no way I would. If <laughs> I mean, he wasn't already Tom Cruise, there's right. no way they would allow a regular right. actor to do this. But 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 for for the sake of this conversation, and yeah. I do find it respectful, and, yeah. and again, the dude works hard, so I'm gonna give him all that. But yeah, kind of crazy. Well, I, I, yeah, you could definitely shoot a movie a lot quicker with someone else using stuntman. I mean, you're absolutely right. I mean, you'd but save yeah. a lot of money if, and, if, and if it's, less it's, liability. Why do you want to take three months of flying lessons on a helicopter just to shoot one scene to make it real? But, you know, that's why Tom Cruise is Tom Cruise. And I, <laughs> and I give him the credit. I look at it. Yeah. As a, it it's in the plus column Yeah. as far out as it seems. Sure. Uh, when I think of the hard work, I, 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 I put the other kind of thoughts into it and just, you know. Yes. I, I think he, he does the... The everyday hard work. Yeah, certainly that is not required in yes. Hollywood, but, um, but it's just yeah. something that he does. So yeah. and I've seen, good for I think him. I've seen every movie on this list. I, I've seen all the Mission Impossibles mm-hmm. prior to the last no, the last one that came out. Okay, so I need to catch that one and then Fallout. Cool. Um, I'm excited about Fallout. Looks good. Yeah, um, I, I have yeah. missed I have missed some of his films. For instance, I've heard how good Edge of Tomorrow is, and I've never seen it. Really? And then I think he went through a, a time where I, I kind of took a break from him. Um, uh, day and night with uh, Cameron Diaz. Oh yeah, and, yeah, missed a few yeah. of those. Yeah. But for the most part, his career is long for a reason. Yes, and, and I'm, I'm excited for Top Gun too. Yeah, yeah. And when does when does that come out? Do uh, we know? Yeah, ne- yeah. In the next couple of years, sometime. Yeah, exactly. yeah, cool. Whatever he wants to do, I'm, I'm pretty much going to support. Cool. Give him a thumbs up for the most part. Nice. Yeah. Moving on, last segment here. Uh, we are uh, we're covering a suggested reel, is what I call it. So I just, something that either. Um, didn't kill at the box office, maybe something people aren't super familiar with, or maybe an older flick that people kind of forget about or kids haven't you know, heard of or seen. So the movie is Clue from 1985. Um, Christopher Lloyd, Tim Curry. Uh, the synopsis that you find online is this. Six guests are invited to a strange house and must co- cooperate with the staff to solve a murder mystery. So it's a murder mystery. It's kind of a spoof. It's silly. It's goofy. It's fun. Tim Curry plays a butler. He's hilarious. Um, if you like murder mystery but aren't into the scary part because it's not scary, uh, it's really funny. It's um, it's kind of have a as a cult following, and it's probably go in your odd category, so you wouldn't care for it. But have you ever seen it? I have not. I'm a fan of Tim Curry and yep. Christopher Lloyd. Uh, so I come I come from the era when the game was popular, the board game. Uh huh. And a funny side note: uh, in 2017. I- the winner of the Cape Comic Con costume contest was the cast of Clue. Oh, cool. Very cool. Nice. Yeah, nice. They did a great uh, job. Yeah, nice tie in there. Mm-hmm. So, so um, it's certainly not for everyone, but that is, my, that is my suggested reel for today. So if you're into comedies, if you're into silly stuff, um, it's fun. It's a fun movie. Um, yeah, I just really like it. I don't know why uh, my wife makes fun of me for this, but I really like it. Uh, Does the guest get a su- 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 suggested reel? Yes. Good. Uh, Kevin Costner's No Way Out. No great, Way Out. Great political intrigue thriller. Cool. And he it was his breakout role. It nice. was way back in, I don't know, 90. I don't know. 90 I'm, ca- I'm, ca- I'm yeah. guessing. So. <laughs> cool. no, no Way Out. No Way Out. Very good. Cool. Great. Man. Ken, thanks for being here. Enjoyed it thoroughly. I appreciate it. Thanks, All right. See you. Hey, everybody. I do hope you enjoyed the conversation with Ken Murphy today. Now, if you want to hear all the interesting facts and corrections from our episode, make sure and stay tuned. My wife is preparing to correct me on my many, many mistakes throughout the show. So now, get ready for the fact check on episode six with Ken Murphy. Welcome back to our fact check segment after our wonderful, long, full discussion with how many more adjectives could I think of? Interesting conversation with Ken Murphy. The Ken inf- Murphy. Infamous Kenneth Murphy. Kenneth, I want to say J. Mur- I don't know his middle name. Uh, Kenneth Murphy. Yeah. So I don't know what I'm saying. It's late. Um, we have a lot to correct on this episode. Yes, the most out of every episode. Congratulations, um, Ken. You won... <laughs> The most mistakes in a podcast of all time. He just no. talked about a lot of stuff, and it was such well, an interesting episode. To be fair, it was a lot of stuff by me too. I think it's not. I'm not calling Ken out, but with Ken's conversation with myself between the two of us, teamwork, Ken. And it it wasn't all 
No mistakes. one can make mistakes like Ken and I. What? It, it wasn't all mistakes. I mean, just right, not right. knowing something. Just kind of confirmations on stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and you just told me um, before we started recording that Ken did have a number of things correct, but we're yeah. just going to kind of confirm on his because he, I, I think, kind of guessed, but he was right on a lot of stuff. So, yeah, no, nothing bad there at all. He was right on a lot of stuff, but our conversation was pretty long. So we're going to go ahead and get down to the nitty gritty and start with um, error number one or, or, or fact check number one here. So I'm just going to confirm that Ken was right on this, mm. that the Cardinals have won 11 World Series and the Yankees have won 27. I had no idea, which is yes. why I wanted to check. I just wanted Good anybody old. else who was like me to know that was true. St. Louis, yeah, 11. 11 is nothing to to laugh at. I mean, that's a, a good accomplishment by St. Louis, but good Lord, yeah, the Yankees can't compete with the Well, that's why, that's why I had to check. I was like, 27. Insane. They've had yep. a lot of good years. Okay, yeah. Number two, the next one. Um, And then just confirming when Randy Johnson was mm-hmm. with the Diamondbacks. Diamondbacks, yeah. 99 to 04. 99 to 04. Um, here's a... Oops, I just hit my coffee mug while recording. I'm sure you guys will enjoy hearing that. Um, Fun fact about Randy Johnson. Okay, this isn't a fact, but stop what you're doing right now. If you're driving in your car, if you're at work, whatever you're doing, stop. And YouTube, Randy Johnson hits bird. It will be well worth your uh, seven seconds. Randy Johnson threw a pitch, and most people are probably that are sports fans are familiar with this. But if you're not, YouTube, Randy Johnson hits bird with a pitch, and uh, it's. I mean, sorry if you're an animal lover, it probably isn't hilarious, but it's hilarious to a lot of people. He hit a bird, obviously on accident, but during a game, he threw a pitch in it. All you, all you see are feathers fly. So, oh, um, yeah, I know, but it's yeah. <laughs> you're, you're for those get that Peter enjoy, calling you. I yeah. Uh, for those that uh, enjoy that kind of comedy, it's worth it. Go look it up. And then, okay, so the triplets got brought up from the Cowboys. Which I'm just doing my best to make the fact check as long as the episode, so it's going to match. So you're welcome. Okay, what else? Pitch Perfect? <laughs> no, the triplets. Triplets. And the Cowboys? Yes. Okay, so I'm just going to throw this out here. My all-time favorite team, but Cowboys. beyond that, uh-huh. yes. Um, You guys were kind of questioning when the triplets was coined. There is yeah. no exact like date out there said when it was, mm-hmm. but I think... From what I found, Roughly. there were a couple of um, comments from the from ninety. So I yeah. just that's the first that's the first time I could see I, it brought up. Yeah, I started it when I was born, so that's where it came from. <laughs> You're welcome. And then, and then America's team also. When was that coined? Nineteen. Yeah. There was a nineteen seventy eight Cowboys highlight film. John Facenda opened with they appear on television so often that their faces are as familiar to the public as the presidents and movie stars they're the dallas cowboys america's team that is the first time it was ever coined was 1978 in that film so that's a quote and from the film yes yeah. sorry i should have said that but no that's, that's a quote. yeah yeah it was a quote from the movie in 78 um and ken made sure to bring out that it was a uh, was it self-titled or self-coined so eh, sort of yeah yeah it was kind of brought up by their own by their own film about themselves i guess but anyway it's stuck so regardless yeah cool 78 okay and then <clears throat> he brought up the difference of movie ticket prices mm-hmm. in the u.s for la specifically i mean it does raise <sighs> yeah. in certain areas but I, um it's not everything's at, higher in la That's yeah cool. it's it depends on the theater you go to there too so there are some sure. really nice theaters that cost a whole lot more than some of their more average theaters yeah so, but there's no exact difference. Sure. Yeah, it's kind of a tough thing to look up because of because of what you said. I mean, there's even I mean, you look at any any city that has multiple theaters. Sometimes, I mean, even depending on the hour, what day you go, the prices will change. So it's kind of a tough thing to get exactly right. But yeah, it was higher. So, all right, what is up next? The year that the Sandlot came out it was '93. Sandlot, yeah. That was questioned on, I believe. Probably by me. He knew that. Um, I think the reason why I was questioned is because I was like, um, uh, the year we covered, uh, that was a flashback year, was, was 93, and yet I didn't have it down as one of the, anything. I didn't have it as honorable mention or one of my favorites, which is weird because I like that movie, 
and I usually do a fair bit of, of research on movies that came out in the flashback year, and that was just one that I missed, so that's on me. I just didn't see it, and he did have it written down, and so I was like, whoa, I missed it, but anyway. Yes. So yeah, it was correctly uh, 93 by Ken, so good job, Ken. Um, and then you were you couldn't remember who, well, what Robert Redford's name in Winter, Winter Soldier was. Mm-hmm. Oh, Alexander yeah. Pierce is the actor's name. Oh, of course, that's such a hard name to remember. My own, yeah. Jeez. <laughs> Pierce, got it. Okay. Okay, and this one was fun to look up. Um, the first time that the story was told about Han Solo meeting Chewie. Oh yeah. So this isn't actually. I'm gonna. I'm going to explain this first. I've got it written down here. Okay. It's the official Star Wars canon was in the Han Solo movie. The now discarded expanded universe of Star Wars merchandise. So Good Lord. It's it's not even the actual movies or anything. It was some, some comic books that came out. So the 2000 comic book miniseries of that, it was Star Wars Chewbacca. So it was all about Chewbacca. And it involved his backstory and... I told you this the fact check was going to be long. I'm sorry. Um, no, it's. I'm glad you're covering it all. Uh, but here, Solo was an Imperial officer who saved Chewie's life twice when he was interrupted in the midst Aww. of an attempt to free Wookiee slaves from the Empire. As a result, the two formed a bond that only grew when Solo left the Imperial service. Huh. So. Yeah, I did, did, totally did not know that. That was, But it was really fun to look that up. It was kind of hard to find that, but it was... Even though it's not the actual Star Wars movies or anything that was yeah. written down by that, it's still kind of cool to see that different version. Yeah. Um, For sure. But yeah, next was Ken's movie that makes him cry. Aww. Brian's song. He didn't have the exact year for that. He did say in the 70s, but that was 71. So I just wanted to clarify 71. what the exact year was. So And cool. then Starsky and Hutch, the TV show, which. I'm going to be honest. People are going to think I'm dumb. I thought it was a movie. Well, there was a movie. I know, but I didn't yeah. realize that the oh, that original, was, the that the original was, based, was a TV show. Yeah, I feel so. like that happens a lot, though. People reboot with a TV show from a movie or vice versa, and then it's usually so many years after that the new generation of people really don't know what it came from. So, I mean, yeah, I feel like that happens a fair but. amount. That was through 75 to 79. That was another one when Ken knew kind of like the estimate of what it was, but uh-huh. he didn't see the exact years. So I just wanted to clarify. Yeah. And then Pitch Perfect. So yeah. Ken wasn't, probably wasn't exactly wrong on this. No. So, but wanted to say it did make $113 million. So uh, the reason why this is coming up is I think he said um, this was his guilty pleasure movie. And yeah. the he said it kind of or the reason why it what he chose it is because it didn't do well box office wise and then they, they ended up making a trilogy which is it was accurate they obviously made a trilogy but um, I'm not a hundred percent sure on when like how long it took it for it, for the movie to uh, gain traction in the box office but it did do pretty well actually like he said uh, so it didn't flop. But uh, perhaps he was referring to maybe it took a while to gain some traction and it didn't do well the first few weeks. Uh, that could be could be the case. Not 100% on that, but um, not discounting Ken's comments. So um, he well, could be right on that. Looking back, obviously, my group of friends and me, we weren't everybody, but we did uh, we did all wait to see how it went, like what other people said. Yeah, it was it covered a um, not a real common um topic or uh subject you know as far as acapella groups i mean it wasn't the most popular and cool thing so i could see when it first came out people could be questionable and say well i'm gonna let my friends go see it and then and then check it out later so yeah again it's no exact way for us to track um how how long it took for it to make money but it did it, it wasn't a flop but it wasn't like crazy huge success so just wanted to kind of touch on that on how much and what was the number again can you tell me what, what it made box office it made 113 million. The budget was 17 million. Okay, yeah. So certainly did it did well for itself, but um, yeah, I think we covered that well enough. And then, so you guys talked about Tom Cruise and yeah, just, a lot love Tom Cruise. Yes, and just to clarify, the year that Top Gun came out, that was in '86. Hmm. Okay, I don't. I honestly don't remember 
Um, just to bring this up again, we do record these fact checks uh, like a while after I recorded, so I didn't remember what I said in the recording with Ken. But yeah, I didn't know that. I was I was kind of thinking it was 85 or 7, so right between there. Cool. And then Ken's recommended movie, No mm -hmm. Way Out, that came out in 87. Yeah. I've never seen that. I guess I should. He recommended it, so. We'll have to watch it sometime. Yeah. He likes it. Should check it out. What else? Any that is all. That's it. Yep. Well, I talked a lot, probably because I'm drinking coffee right now. I've been talking more, but <laughs> um, yeah, I think we did did that pretty quickly. So that was good. That was a fun episode. You you liked it, right? Listening. Yes. To Ken. I and Ken Murphy's a cool guy. So. Yeah. Everybody, go see uh, go see Ken at the local Starbucks. So. Um, yeah. No. What I, what I was gonna say also about the this episode was the. Uh, obviously, it was fun because everybody loves Ken Murphy, but um, Marvel, well, anytime we get a chance to talk about Marvel, uh, uh, we had such a huge task of trying to cover all 19 films that we knew that we didn't have enough time to go through them all in depth, but it was a lot of fun to talk about them even briefly. It's a lot, lot of good movies, and yeah, 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 the, the coffees definitely have an effect on how much I'm talking, well so... What's, just something to say about the fact check, what's awesome yeah. is you guys didn't have any corrections on the Marvel stuff oh that's because you both love marvel well yeah. i do too and you it seems wrote, like you covered all your bases yeah i wrote a number of things down before we recorded but yeah ken certainly knows his his uh superhero marvel stuff yeah for sure yeah all right well i hope you guys enjoyed it and we will see you next time bye <laughs>